Okay. Tech issues resolved. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is a wonderful Monday night now that things are working. Um, as you can tell, it's Cubby and myself. Mr. Young is is unfortunately under the weather. I'm not exactly sure. Um, he, he referenced some like explosive things happening, and I just was like tuned him out. I was like, no, we're we're not, we're not going. I'm not having that conversation, John, during my dinner. And he said, but I gotta tell you about it. <laughs> no, you, no, you don't. No, you don't. But uh, you know, in, in all fairness, thank you very much for taking time on your Monday night to join us. I, I know there are a thousand things that could be happening right now, especially as the weather is getting warmer, the the you know, nights are staying brighter later, and and for a lot of you, it's very tempting to be out doing eight thousand things. But instead, you're joining Cubby and myself. And so thank you very much. And we might even have, we may even have a surprise guest. Hope so. <laughs> what are you saying? Are, yeah. are, you, are you saying we're not good enough to, to carry? No, it's uh, just new voice, new new ideas. It's always fun. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, we won't say who that surprise guest is because I will at least tell you it is a guy. Uh, he is working on fixing things because it's been a little bit since he's done any type of um, camera work. So he doesn't have things quite 100% set up. And so um, hopefully, hopefully he'll be able to join us and, and we'll be all good. But if not, if not, Cubby and I got this. We got this. We got this. So, um, Cubby, to my understanding, you you were saying you had quite quite the weekend wow yeah um my bonus daughter graduated from uh, high school this weekend so of course we had all the high school you know graduation parties and graduation coupled with a uh, full weekend full of weddings friday saturday every guy in the company out making sure they were all set up and uh drag brunch on sunday and actual you know events i mean it was crazy it was just like I finally i was glad monday got here so i could take a day off <laughs> <laughs> it was is busy and, and everybody who's a part timer goes Monday day off. What what, yeah. what are you talking about? Um, no, I, I I feel your pain, but I, I'm glad it was good for you. I'm glad you had uh, definitely a a busyness to it. Um, I just finished my third double weekend in a row. My, in fact, my only my only sets for this year, I, which was crazy because like at the beginning of the year, I'm like, oh, May's gonna be kind of light. I got like a wedding, I got a school dance, and that was it. And then just everything flooded within the past few months, but. I took out, I took out the audio guest book. I sent you a picture of it. Um, and I got a phone booth for the audio guest book. And I tell you, this thing was slick. It just really was like the, the comments I got from the venues before, before the guests even got there, the venue was like, Oh, like that's part of the photo booth. And I was like, no, like that, that's a phone booth. I wanted to ask you, yeah, I want to ask you how that went in there. Um, because I got I got an audio guest book, but I didn't buy the facade. Um, mm -hmm. and I know they, the audio guest books are very popular or or trending right now. And uh some people do offer facades, i.e. looking like a phone booth and or like a British phone booth and such. How did that did that block some of the sound that so you could people could hear the recordings better? Is this your first time you said it's the first time using the audio guest book? No, this is I mean, this is the first time with the phone booth part. With, I had the, the audio okay. guest book out before. Um to be honest with you, I don't think it's a fair comparison. Um, I, I haven't listened. First off, I haven't listened back to the tracks, but the first event where I had it was just off of the room that I was DJing in to the, to the point that you could still kind of hear a little bit of the music in the background, but not like crazy. This past weekend, I was completely isolated. We're talking like room, uh. hallway. And then the room I was in and to that, I was around the corner. Like I couldn't even hear what the DJ was doing. Um, so that was definitely not getting picked up. I don't know if other ambient noise may have been, but it couldn't have hurt. Right. Like, like it was, it's cloth and it's got a curtain, but it's still going to be somewhat isolating compared to just completely wide open. Um, and so it was kind of cool. It was, you know, the guests had some fun with it. They were getting in and, and this particular, you know, couple's friends and stuff, they really had a good time with it because they were like, they were jumping in and doing like fake phone calls to each other. So they went a different direction than it was originally intended for, but yet still had a blast with it. Um, and, and like I said, everybody was really, everybody seemed to really be enjoying it. Um, so I, I'm glad that was something that I picked up and, and can have some fun with for sure. I do enjoy the messages. I always tell my couples that I always going to put the message in two different folders. 
Uh, the first folder is all your family, friends, and loved ones. They're very sweet ones. And then your other folder is all his drunk, Dan's drunk friends. They're like, Dan's a whore, you know, leaving. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'll let you do with those ones what you want. But here's a very nice, these sweet ones from aunts and uncles, grandmas, and, and everybody. And then these other ones, when they get drunk or celebrating, which is a fancy word for drinking, um, they, you know, Dan's a whore. You get all the funny ones, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I should try that. I didn't, I didn't go to that extent. So the first, the first ones, um, I basically, the, the phone that I'm using, everything records super, super loud. Um, so I was, I was dropping into the audio and I was just like bringing everything down, just bring, you know, bring it down. Like, I don't know, five DB, I think. And and then it was like, okay, it's fit and it's not, not overmodulated. We're good. Um, so I didn't listen to everything, but I did listen to a couple of those. And I think that might've been cool. I just dropped it all into a single folder. I put it in a, on a thumb drive and, and then send it off, um, for that. But, and I saw your thumb drives. You want to show people, tell people about your thumb drives. I don't know if I want to share all my secrets. It's okay. okay. I'll, I'll be quiet. About the phone booth. Um, I, I'll tell you, I'll say this for my local guys. Um, you you know. want to make sure that you're just using mine. That's all. Yes. I've got an extra one. We'll work out a deal. Right. All right. So, so this is, this is how I'm doing my thumb drives. Right. So it's yeah. message in a bot. It's message in a bottle. Right. So there's you can cork off. There's, there's your USB drive. Um, and then it goes in a nice little box. And then I mail out the box and, and yeah. So do you put a sticker uh, on there at all or like a card at the bottom? Uh, there's not, I mean, I maybe could squeeze a card on there, I guess. A business card? I, when I ordered them, I was supposed to get a logo on it mm -hmm. on, on the boxes. The problem was it happens. Like I ordered it and then like they got back to me, but when I was trying to check the messages, like something was messed up in the app. And so I couldn't check the messages from the seller. And then they're like, listen, like we're told we got to get this stuff out within, I think it was like two days, three days or something like that. And so I didn't get that message until the app, the app piece got fixed. And by then they already sent it. So I was, they're just like, we're sorry. Like we can do it for the next time. And I was like, that's fine. I, it wasn't like the logo was not make or break for me. I, right. I, th trust me. If a couple doesn't remember that, they got this from me. My logo on the bottom wasn't going to help that. So, right. you know, I, I think the fact that I do that is going to be, is going to be, you know, 10 times better. We'll see. I, my first couple should receive, could, should have received it maybe today, if not tomorrow <laughs> from, from the first wedding. So where I, where I use that. So I'm kind of curious to, to get some feedback on that. Cause I, I'm pretty sure I'll hear from the bride on that one. Uh, Cause she was just like, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see these. And she, and she was worrying about some of those extra, not worrying. She was looking forward to some of those, that other folder that you talked about. Um, oh, they're hilarious. Yeah, some of them just are hilarious. Um, and I, I just kind of warned them that I'm just going to put them to you. You can do whatever you want to with them and enjoy them. Yeah. The one this weekend, I, there was a couple that I overheard that was like, uh, they, they were legit leaving a message. Like, this is so-and-so. And my phone number is dot, 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 dot. And I was just like, oh my gosh. They're like leaving a legit like style message. And the, and when, it, when they hung up, the person that came out, it turned out it was the groom's dad. And he knew what it was, but he was totally playing it off. Like he was like leaving an old school voicemail of like, you know, yeah, call me back. This is my phone number. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so yeah, so those things those things are, can be fun. It, that's for sure. You know, it, it just makes it different, right? It, it gives something else that can be cool to do for your events and just and like I said, just have some fun with. So. It's the it's the, it's the new chocolate fountain for the next six eight months or year. You know, one year. It is. Year. It is. And you know what? The funny thing is, I could at first I was seeing like when I jumped on board, I'm like, this is definitely a trend that's going to be cool. I want to get on on this before it's too late. I could, and then I was like, then I was seeing everybody and their brother flooding the market with them, like to to buy. And I'm like, man, the the bottom just dropped out on these. Like, you know, originally they were like a thousand bucks, and then like you could buy them from overseas for like twelve fifty, like twelve dollars and fifty cents maybe. Yeah. Um, but so then I was like, oh, did I did I just waste my money and stuff like that? But I really think that these, if marketed correct have some potential lasting power, 
but you can't just buy the one that's overseas because that I think what I what I was very happy to see is the ones that I was seeing from overseas. Like then I'm seeing like the flood of like Facebook messages of, oh my gosh, this doesn't work. Like help me out. What can it, it's recording in the wrong format? The phones aren't reading it. And it's like, yeah, because you bought the cheap version. Yep. You get what you pay for. Um, so the, there's, and then there's some people that are doing some DIY things that are just, oh, they're so cool. Like, like the old school, like diner phones, like the ones that you pick up off the, off the wall. No, I'm talking like old school diner, like, like the old school pay phones. You pick the phone up. Oh, like, like that style. Like some people are making their own for that. I think those are really cool. Um, and, and yeah, yeah. The one you got is cool too. I like that. It's, I think the older they look, the more we'll say lasting power that they're going to have. Um, yeah. I've got like the 80s version. I've got like the 80s version. So mine's not that old school, uh, but people were loving it. People were digging it. So that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. <laughs> we always get sidetracked. I, I, we did. We did. We totally got sidetracked. And I just know I made like sales for like four, five audio guest book, you know, makers. But um, with that, I was kind of also, you know, hoping that our, our special guest was going to join us. But at this point, I'm thinking he's just, not going to do that. So, um, with that being said, with that being said, let's go ahead and, and jump into what the tonight's topic is, which is, you know, why are DJs still hating on DJs in 2023? So, so let's paint this picture for everybody. That's kind of like, what is he talking about? Because this might not be happening to you. It might not be happening in your area. It might not be whatever. Right. So, you know, when I got into when I got into DJing, this was very much the way things kind of went. We didn't talk to the other DJs in our area, right? We kept to our own little lane. Um, I'll be honest with you, when I got started, I I mean I obviously knew there was DJs in other areas, but I did not correspond with any of them. We we didn't, you know, I I didn't go to conventions and and so I really didn't know personally these other people. And so you just kind of kept in your lane, whether you hated on them, that might be a, a different story, but you didn't associate. And, and then there were some that actually went to the whole hating, right? And, and I can even recall, like there was, there was an all out, like almost a fist fight. I remember at a wedding show one time between two DJs. And now granted, th this guy was, had pretty much copied the other guy's like website my understanding and, and the names were very similar and and the other guy just had had enough and it was like that's it like you you're you're being a little punk like I, stop it and and so i saw this fight so you get this high, hating type of thing then we go through a transition and i would say this transition has probably been in place for the last 13 14 years maybe a little bit longer where everybody was friends again Right. Like, like we, we have these friendships and, and I think some of that was, you know, due to certain Facebook groups, right? There was the old chat boards and stuff like that. And I think that developed some of that camaraderie, but you also had, you also had some of the, the associations that were really trying to ramp up. You had Facebook groups like DJ idea sharing, which was bringing some other groups, you know, kind of under the fold. Um, and, and you had, I, what I was viewing as an uptick in at least knowledge of conventions if you didn't go to conventions. So people were like, okay, I can be buddy, buddy with them. You know, there's enough business to go around. Everybody's good. We're fine. Now we're kind of starting to swing that pendulum back in another direction. So again, maybe some of you are not seeing this, but the, but it is out there, right? It, you, you can easily search some social media posts and, and find that kind of thing. But what seems to be going on is that there's this frustration over you know, some older DJs and, and not always older DJs, but this is kind of the generality that I've been seeing lately is the older DJs hating on the newer DJs. And we can go into some of those reasons and we will a little bit, but also, um, you know, just kind of this fight that's going among, like, because there's not as many jobs or you have some more of these DJs that are content with doing part-time that is so limited part-time that it's almost like they're just there to take a few jobs rather than there for the care and the business and the, and the personality. So, so let's start back at the beginning. Who do you hate, Cubby? I hate them all. I hate everybody equally. 
that explains I, a lot right now. No, I'm just kidding. I would, uh, I would really, I, I, I'd almost go instead of older, I'd go with established versus part time. Okay. Versus, uh, versus going full time versus part time. Cause there are some established DJs that are part time and that, and that's hard, no harm, no foul. Um, but I think they're, I, I'd go with established because you're right, it's not always older DJs. It's sometimes they're just established or maybe they're full timers and their livelihood. And they, it is an off year. We've talked about, you know, this year being an off year. Um, with bookings it's uh, just across the board with everybody uh, from photographers to venues um, it's it, we've talked about it you know and that uh, it's just a weird year you're know, coming out of COVID it was it was hot and mm-hmm. everybody, everybody's working there was not enough DJs um, now it's just it's where it's it's a down year it's kind of kind of like the economy sometimes you know everything everything is, is cyclical um, I think we're just having a weird year so uh, people that have their livelihoods or might be, you know, might be getting nervous. So this one, the guy working, like you said, uh, extremely part-time doing five weddings a year, taking one in, in the hot season for him mm-hmm. or for, away from him. And uh, you might be jealous. I don't know. Yeah. I, and I would say, you know, not just the hot season, because I think the hot season for the most of us, I, I think what we start to recognize is, Listen, during during this, and at least around me here, we'll say the fall, like September, October, like they could have those gigs because I'm guaranteeing I'm going to get something else. It It's the times that things are maybe a little bit on the lighter side. So or at least for what I've noticed is a big trend has been July and, and June wet, June and July weddings have really started to fall off in my area. When I got first got started, I mean, it was like June. Everybody wanted June. Nobody wanted the fall you know, maybe a couple, but it was like June was the month. And if you weren't booked in June, you knew something was wrong. That's fall now. And and so June and July have become these pockets, I think for a lot of DJs that are, that are missing things that are, that are just not booked like they used to. And then they look over and they see that extremely part-time person taking one of those weekends that they end up sitting at home. And not just because they're sitting at home, but they never even got the phone call. Right. They never even got the email, their inquiry for that date. And then they're going, dang, like, like now, now I'm not just, not just that I get beat. I didn't even get a shot. And, and that I think sometimes that tends to hurt. But when you got started, let's go, let's go back to that point. Right. When you got started, did you feel any like, I don't want to say animosity tours, but did you feel like, okay, I'm the new kid on the block those established people were like hating on me for, for being, for being coming along and doing this job. The only, I, I, I got to tiptoe around this. The only person that was pretty salty that I opened up my you own DJ company. Names. No, no. The only people that were really salty that I opened up my own DJ company was a DJ company that I left. Um, other DJ companies in my market were very supportive. Uh, venues were very supportive. Um, Photographers are very supportive and and thought it was a good move. Thought it was a good business move. Thought it was a great personal move. Um, and I was I started out part time. You know, of course, not being search full time, but I started out part uh, part time. And I said, I think the only person salty was the person that I, you know, and it's understandable. We we've mended since then have mended bridges and and fences. And um, it is it was never a personal thing. It was strictly a business thing. Um, and it's that's all it was. So did you feel when you were doing, when you were working for that company, mm-hmm. did you feel any, any outside pressure at that point? I mean, that's a little different. I think when you're part of a multi-op, um, I think that's a little, a little different. Although I have, I have some stories to go there when we go a little bit newer, but do you, do you find any of that type of frustration or, or directed towards all of you that were part of it? Yeah, uh, yeah, they they were they were somewhat sometimes. Uh, yeah, because we had so many people, our prices, our prices were lower because we had so many DJs. So to be able to get everybody out, you couldn't be premium in your market, but you still provided a great product. I mean, all the DJs were great, but we were we were a little bit lower than than people because we wanted to make sure it was it was a qu- a quantity versus a uh, and but we saw the quality, mm-hmm. you know, but it was more of the quantity thing, you know, type thing. So yeah. There, there was there was some animosity you know, because we were a little bit lower um than some of the of the single ops uh maybe uh two ops or whatever uh, people maybe had two for you know DJs and their staff that was big I, and that that lower price I think becomes something that it, it's hard for the other side to see right like unless you've had a conversation with them 
the the speculation becomes, oh, they're just doing it to undercut us all. Like they're just doing it because, you know, they're not good enough to raise their prices. Well, might not be the case. Um, and, and I've got a friend of mine who, you know, he's, he's got seven DJs under him or something like that. And they do a, they do a great job. They, they do a, they do a fantastic job, but he and I had a conversation one time and I'm like, listen, your area is bigger than mine. How are you not charging at least as much as I am, if not more, right? You should definitely be able to do it. And he's like, listen, he's like, if I do that, you know, I've got seven guys here that I've got to make sure that I go out. Seven guys that are relying on me to keep their calendars full. And he's like, <laughs> so if I take off, you know, a hundred bucks or 200 bucks from what is, you know, maybe top and puts me more in the middle um, or on the low end of the middle, middle, everybody's working. And when I go higher than that, I've got some guys that are sitting. And for me, it's okay. But for these guys who are depending on me, not so much. Yep. And I was like, all right, I get what you're talking about. I still didn't agree with them, but that was just because I, I'm not in his shoes, right? I can't, I, I can only speculate. Um, so, so sometimes there's that aspect of it, right? And then there's the other aspect, which, you know, we'll get to as far as the kind of the current one. But, you know, I, I will say that some of my best friendships have become, D, have been DJs and some DJs in my local market. Um, during COVID, oh my God. So, you know, everything's shut down. None of us are, are playing anywhere. Some of us are trying to play online. And it was to the point, it was at the point where things were starting to open, but yet the places weren't having us play, right? So we, we had like weekends where it was like, okay, we can be together in our in a house, but we can't go play any place. And there's th three guys and myself, there was the four of us. And we started doing this thing called Friday Night Fire. And, and I don't, I can't remember. I think it was Seth who came up with this term and, and lo God loves Seth. I think he had a few when he named it, but we, you know, we just got together and we played and it was these guys that I was associates with, you know, like I knew them and, and a couple of them, I talk a little bit more, but we were not that close. And during that time, we really got a chance to kind of develop our friendships a little bit more and, you know, and, and just kind of really enjoy and, and since then we go to like to Hershey Park and just you know which is a local amusement park and <clears throat> just enjoy each other's company and kind of like we can talk a little shop but we don't talk shop and and I think that's where I think some of that animosity also comes from is you know they think well if I if I get together with other DJs I have to talk shop and that means I have to I have to get out the measuring stick on on my business. Right. I, I have to prove that my, and no, like you can talk a lot of things and a lot of things DJing and never have to get to that point. But so, so let's kind of transition. So, so you went through that phase and, and granted, yeah, given the circumstance, I can understand why, you know, that person was, but I'm glad you guys mended, mended since then. What are, how are some of those friendships that you've seen? How have they, developed i mean I, I know you and john you guys talk frequently but let's like some of the other ones like how how did those friendships grow we'll say that yeah kind of like you uh kind of organically um you know you started hanging out more you, you find that you had you know same interests and even though you, you do the same job you know week on on the weekends you don't always have to talk about your job um and you just kind of became friends and you talked about other things and and, uh, you know, when somebody got sick, you're checking up on them. Hey, how you feeling? You know, um, and, and more, you came more of a personal level than more, more of a professional level. And I think those just kind of, when it be, when, when you take your relationship from a professional level to a personal level, it goes to another, it goes to another level. I don't mean you keep saying level all the time, but, um, it's, it's true. Oh, another level. Um, you ever see that comedian? Uh, it's yeah. I try not to, once, once it goes to, to a personal level, it's just, it's an, uh, it's, it's really cool. Um, it's, it's really organic Just, and let it, and let it happen. Just, and, and it will, it will. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is just, you know, start just having that chat, like, you know, and, and, and maybe it starts over business, right. It starts, you know, you see them do something or, and, and just be like, Hey, I really liked what you did. 
you know, would you share any insight? Um, in, in the chat, there was a conversation a few minutes ago about um, trying to shadow. And, you know, and so, some DJs being very protective of that, um, not wanting others to come alongside. And, and so I would almost say, you know, recommend if, that, if you are dealing with that local um, and, and I kind of understand why maybe the local ones are kind of like, why would you do that? But, or just be real suspicious of it. Reach out to some ones that are farther out, you know, you know, the ones that are like an hour and a half to two hours from you. Um, and, and for some of you, you're like, well, that's right in my backyard, Well, whatever you get my idea. You travel a little bit farther than you normally would. Um, they're the ones that are going to, they're going to love for you to come along for you to, for you to talk with and, and everything else. And I got a chance to do that on three different, three different occasions. And then I kind of let it go by the wayside. and I really need to bring it back. Um, but all three of them were just like, yeah, come, come on. Let, let, you know, and then, and then like when it was all said and done, we, we talked and what they got out of it was they, they asked me to critique them, right? They're like, you're not my client. You're not going to be asked me that everything was great and fancy and it was perfect. I want to know what could I have done better? Um, and then likewise, they share some different ideas and, and I've gotten a chance to do that. Like I said, one of them was actually local because I had posted on Facebook, Hey, I'm just looking for some DJs to shadow. If you're willing to let me do that, I'd love it. You know, I, I said, I'll be your, I'll be your free labor for the night. Right. I'll, I'll be your, I'll be your roadie. Um, let me know. And one of the local guys said, come on. And I said, are you sure, Kevin? Like, are you sure you're okay with that? And he was like, yeah, he's like, he's like, I got nothing to hide. You and I are different. Our personalities are different. He's like, you're not going to suddenly do this and be me. He's like, I know that I know you. And I said, okay. And I took him up on it. And, and it was, it was a really cool experience. It was just, it was nice to see somebody do something different without having to be the person that was a guest at the wedding spying on somebody, you know, like, like, I think a lot of us have done that. We were a guest at somebody's wedding. And we like spy on the DJ. This isn't that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, be an innovator, not an imitator. Um, yeah. I mean, everybody makes hamburgers. Burger King makes hamburgers and McDonald's makes hamburgers. Um, Burger King flame broils. There's McDonald's doesn't. They have them on a griddle. So every, like he said, he, he nailed it when he said, you have different, we have different personalities. We're not the same. So a competition is great. It drives business and uh, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's, they both sell Coke. Coke. I mean, Burger King sells Coke, McDonald's sells Coke. Um, but like I said, they, they both have different products and just, like I said, just, just know, just know that. And now I think we've gotten to a point where things are starting to shift gears again. And I kind of alluded to that in the beginning where people are, people are getting frustrated and somebody hit on it in the, in the post. And I think it's become it, like they said, there's just an arrogance, right? Like you're trying to help somebody come alongside and they just don't want to take your advice or you don't, they don't want to even come just like have that conversation with you. And so I think the, the problem is somebody walking up to you and saying, Hey, I've got a suggestion for you to do something is taken a lot worse than if that person were to come, were to come up to you and say, Hey, you got any advice for me, right? Like, like they're not in a place that's really receptive for it. And so to have that conversation becomes, becomes a difficulty. The other thing is, and I think this is where some of this comes into play, is that social media, right? We've got to be the best. What nobody realizes, or it seems like a lot of people don't realize this, is that our social media side is our highlight reel, right? You're, you're not sharing out those moments when you don't feel like it went the way that it should have, right? I, I had a prom, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. And, and I ended up talking with a, a photographer friend of mine. We, we were chatting back and forth. And I was like, man, I'm just not feeling it tonight. I'm just not really getting into it. You know, I just don't know how this went. And and it was, it was really kind of questioning like the whole night. And I'm like, did I just like, did I just screw this prom up for these kids? And she's like, I'm sure it was not as bad as what you're thinking. I'm sure it was fine. You know, even to the point that I had one kid who came up and was like, you know, you know, great, great song selections tonight. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like that, that, like not with that much enthusiasm, like, yeah, like, no, thanks anyway. And, and it was just like, I was, I was like beating myself up. So 
sometimes I think the arrogance comes into play because we only see these other groups doing what we think is eight hours of a slam dance floor with people jumping and sweating and everything else only to come to find out the, the, if you took each of the reels and put them back to back, it would maybe take 10 minutes of the whole show. Like be aware. And, and Grant, I know there's, the, you got to build up to make the show. All right. Because I could see somebody arguing me. Well, you don't just get that for 10 seconds. I get that. Okay. But it, because we're, we're programmed to think that we have to be the best of the best, we're not willing to listen to other people. We're not willing to hear them out. And I, I realize also this probably doesn't pertain to a lot of our, our listeners because they wouldn't be listening to us if that was the case. Um, but I feel there, there, there's a direction that we need to go. We need to kind of shift that. Um, what are some, before we get into that shift, what are some things that you feel also kind of get in the way right now with that or that has kind of caused that divide again, if you will? Uh, probably some jealousy. Um, to, you know, maybe as maybe he can beat mix and and I can't, or he can scratch, or he does those word mixes where you know you low and get low, and you know, and you can't because or you're not you're not there yet. You know, I'd love to do what Nick Spinelli does. Oh my God, that cat is crazy. You know, and I just sit there envious all the and yeah, am I jealous? God damn right I am. I am jealous. Um, but he's at my market. I don't have to worry about it, but I learned from him. You know, I learned from him. And the thing is, is don't be jealous, learn from it, you know, practice, enjoying practice, you know, um, just, yeah. Um, jealousy, I think is a, is a big thing for a lot of people. Um, you know, when they, when they do get those bookings, you know, and they didn't get the call, I think they're just jealous, you know, and fear, fear, jealousy and fear, like fear. I'm going to, am I going to lose it? Like you said, we all have those nights. Oh my God, am I going to get a bad, you know? Fear, jealousy and fear are two big things. And, and you know, some of the, some of the things I, I just, as you were talking about that, it also made me think about the differences in DJs, okay? So for example, when we got started, the, the big difference between DJs was their music collection, right? Like, the, you know, oh. for a lot of us, like if you're talking you know, before, before, when the animosity was there before, it was the music collections, right? Did you have the best music collection or did somebody else have the best music collection? And of course, everybody's ad said, you know, you want the best call, the best call me, right? Like that was- 27,000 songs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, you know, everybody had like this big library or whatever. And that was that was the competing factor. And I think there was, so, so there was some animosity and je jealousy kind of over that, right? Because they had songs you did and vice versa. And then like computers come along and, and you get the ability to have subscription services where you can download everything and you can buy everything on the fly. Of course, some people were just buying straight out, you know, like hard drives and stuff. And so that, that jealousy kind of had to go away because you couldn't argue over song collection because everybody had access to like everything that was out there, you know, whether it was legal or not, didn't matter. It, it was, you had access to it. And so people became, you know, kind of were able to bond right? Because they didn't have something else to argue with other than Mac versus PC, which is, or Serato versus virtual DJ, which is, I think going to be there until we all die. <laughs> but, but like there wasn't as much to argue over. And, and so that kind of went away. And now the big argument that you see a lot is do you mix or do you, do you have, let me phrase that, not do you mix or not. Do you have to mix or not, right? And so that becomes like this fight like i like the, that's going to be my deathbed statement right like i will go to i will go to war and die on that hill over my opinion on that and you know what maybe it works for you but it could work better whatever might be the direction there right you know or maybe the clients you're you know catering to are the ones that are okay with it be aware that you are different people. There's a lot of business that's out there um, and, and you can still all be happy um, along that same lines. But the other thing that I will say, this is going to be word of advice. This is where I get on my soapbox for a moment. All right. The best, you hit on it earlier when you said, how, how did you word it? it? Not imitate, it was- don't be, an, uh, don't be an imitator, be an innovator. There we go. That's it. So I think one of the other things that that 
leads to some of that frustration and some of that uh, fighting um, among the DJs, whether it's verbalized or it's behind their back. It comes from that impersonation. It comes from that, I'm going to steal that idea. Whether they stole it from you or they got it someplace else and you feel like it came from you, doesn't you know it's hard it's hard to say i know personally i got really frustrated earlier this year and so we started off talking about the audio guest book right i decided to double down and, and i got two of them and i'm like you know what i'm gonna do this i'm gonna put it out i got them i posted on social media that i got them it was like a week and a half later two weeks later one of my friends posted one of the friends that i talked about getting together with the with the that that show he posted his and i was like son of a i was like come on come on like you have every other toy out there you couldn't let me have this one i didn't say this to him this is in me this is my turn well i think i verbalized it but i was the only one in the room at the time so it was like i was talking to me i was like come on and then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know what? The more people that hear about this, the more that, that get this idea, the, the better it's going to be. And, and I did have the conversation to him, like kind of sly, like, hey, you know, I didn't know you got one. Because when he told me, like we were talking about something, he never brought up that he bought one. So that only added to the, the I thought he stole it from me. Like I yeah. thought he saw mine and then posted it. Because like, when you talk about it, he's like, you never mentioned it. I didn't buy any gear at that show. And then, yeah, you did. Um, but I finally just like able to put it behind me and, and move on. Uh, even though it sounds like I'm still angry over it, I'm not. I'm sharing this, I'm sharing what I went through at that point. Um, and now we've shared different ideas. And and as long as he doesn't show up at the phone booth, I think I'm well, okay. Here's the thing: you know, he gets it out of his weddings, you get out of your weddings. More people, like you said, more people see it, the more people gonna want it at the wedding. Right now, you're the only two people in your market that have it, and you're not gonna be putting an audio guest book at his wedding, and he's not, you know. He's not going to be putting well, one That was the thing. Right? I could have been because I had two. <laughs> I bought a second with the idea that it would go out on its own. Um, yeah. But, that, but yeah. But you know what I'm saying? So the more it gets visited, clients or, or potential clients could see it. You know, I, I, uh, when I went to Wedding MBA and I bought mine, uh, a friend of mine who owns a venue was with me. He bought one for his. I'm like, this is awesome, dude. You know, if I need yours, you call me. I need, you know, and they said the more people, the more we, we get it out, it just covers it more. And people are like, I really want that at my wedding. Who's got it? Only Dan and this other guy. You know, I want to call. Now, if he was, if you're 500 and he's 300, eh, you know, you got a problem, <laughs> right? Or not really a problem. So as long as you like keep the bar high, uh, and you both can make money. Yeah. By the way, I'm just gonna throw this out here, Rob. I hate you. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> I see the chat, a message about not having. No, I'm just totally messing with you, Rob. Um, Rob posted. He's like, you don't have to mix. It really depends on the couple. Da da da. And yeah, that's the whole like, do you mix? Do you not? So uh, um, I was just playing off of that because I could. Um, but no, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, I, you know, I think there's there's another thing. Like some people are mentioning here, you know, I think they're very passionate about the thoughts of what your clients want, all right? And I'm not saying Rob's wrong and I'm not saying DJ Solstice and, and what he posted was, was wrong or anything like that. But, you know, there, just like there's a lot of different DJs, there's a lot of different styles. There's also a lot of different styles for clients. And your clients may not want X, Y, Z. They may not ever want somebody who mixes like Nick Spinelli or... MJ or, um, you know, Jason Jenai or, or any of these other ones that are out there that are, that are definitely mixtures that I look up to, but that doesn't mean that there aren't clients out there who want that. So, so don't get mad at somebody for saying that, you know, you need to mix. They may need to for their clients. They may need to play those types of songs for their clients. Well, I think as a professional, we need to ever be evolving. I think you should learn how to mix. If it's at the basic level, be, be in everything, be a great MC, be a great mixer. There's a lot of companies that have an MC and a mixer because a mixer can't talk. He can't, he can't yeah. host. So what you need to learn is to be the total package, a little bit of mix, a little bit of MC, and you're the total package, not just eight, one or the other evolve. Mm -hmm. 
or you're, or you're going to be dead in the water. Exactly. Exactly. And we didn't even get into gear envy. Oh my gosh. I just said, like you said, evolve and immediately immediately think of sneakers, but yeah, there's like the whole gear aspect. Like, like I know I'm wearing pioneer tonight, but then there's the fight over, do you, you know, Roland or rain or Denon or, or pioneer or, or, RCF, or RCF, RCF, yeah. for JBL and, and Mackie's a QSC. Like, yeah, I, Stand, no stand. Do you have a tabletop or do you, you know what is your what yeah. is your move? T- TV versus a stand? And yeah, it's crazy. Just do you, just do you and be good at you. And evolve. maybe that's why there's an argument because there's too many options out there. That's true. And that's where people get salty. Like I, I you know, I'm an MV fan. Some people are RCF fans. I love it. I understand it. I get it. But for me, as a multi-op, I want everybody to have the same system. It's it's got to be across the board the same. I'm not saying I don't like it's too, it's, I'm too late in the game to start changing all my EVs to RCFs. It's just, I can't afford it. Yeah. So, um, and it's, it's just do you, just do you stay, stay in your lane, do you and help, help whenever you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I just looked at the time. I mean, I know we got started late, but wow. We haven't got, we have to cover the rest of it. Yeah. Like more questions. Yeah, we, we did. We did. We're just, we're going to have to end it though. So um, I will say our special guest, and you can make them feel bad because yes, please. Uh, it, Actually, I'm just kidding. Don't make him feel bad because no, I think he legitimately was trying to try to be with us. Trying to try to be with us. Yeah. Um, and, and just had some tech issues. It was going to be none other than Mr. Michael Joseph himself. MJ was was going to try and join us tonight um, because he believes he has the key insight to why other DJs hate on each other. And we we're going to try and get some of the bar slash club scene idea from him. Um, unfortunately, because he hasn't done anything for three months. He didn't have the stuff set up. And so it was kind of a last minute thought um, since John was sick, but um, yeah, maybe next time we'll get it. We'll convince him somehow maybe to, to come join us. And for those of you that haven't met MJ yet, um, real class act guy out of Pittsburgh that used to be on the show. And um, one of, one of my good friends as a result of that. And um, we'll get him back. Hopefully cross my fingers. All right. So uh, coming up next, hanging with Howie, right? So I have no idea what they're going to talk about, but djntv.com forward slash chill. So I'll go and drop that into the chat so everybody can uh, check that link. Of course, it didn't send it as a link, fingers. Um, but you want to go check that out. That is going to be your opportunity to hang out with those guys. Um, they're going to do about a 20 minute segment where they record everything. And then after that, right after they do that 20 minute segment, then they'll say, okay, everybody turn on your cameras. Um, let's talk, let's hang out. And, uh, maybe you have some insight as to why people hate each other. Um, but you can go ahead and do that. And then, uh, what do we got tomorrow night? Oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> I'm back here tomorrow night with Ben Stowe. So 9 PM Eastern, um, 8 PM central. And I don't care about those other time zones. Um, they, Ben and I are going to be talking about, it's going to be a gear question and answer night. So I've got a few questions that I'm going to pose to him. I've got some, got a few like curious questions. And they're not gear related, um, but there's some things that we're going to throw in and just have some fun with. So that'll be tomorrow night at nine. And then 10 o'clock is the Tuesday night music show recording. So again, that'll be djntv.com forward slash chill for that one, for the recording. And then I've got a tip for you Wednesday morning. We've got the shows being rebroadcast Wednesday night. Yeah, and that's your week. That's your week. We don't work on Thursdays. Like, no. no we got, we're too busy preparing for Friday and Saturday. So, Kelby, uh, as, as we bring it to a close, anything else that you wanted to add? Anything else you wanted to throw in there? Yeah, it hates a bad energy, man. Just just uh, do you and help wherever you, help whatever you can. And and uh, if somebody does copy you, take it as a compliment and evolve and, and uh, do something different. Uh, be changing. So, you know, and, and you hit on something else. And, and since we got like a couple seconds here, um, I, I get I want to give a nod to Mark Bernison. Um, He's up in New York and uh, up like upper New York. He was actually one of the guys that let me shadow him one time, which I thought was really cool. His philosophy is to constantly being creative with what he brings to the table. So he doesn't care if anybody copies him. Because by the time you actually implement it, he's moved on. He's already got whatever that next plan or that next thought or next idea of of how to make his shows better. So, you know, that's another thought is, you know, if you find that somebody's imitating you, maybe it's time to to change some things up, to add some new pieces, to to look, to to look different, to act different, whatever might be the case. So just put some two cents. All right. 
On that note, thank you very much to everybody for joining us. I, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, send some good vibes to John as, as he heals. Um, it'll be pretty quick. It's just that stomach bug is is nasty. We did not want him doing that on 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 air. It's, I don't want to catch it. Nope. nope. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. I think we'd be more worried about computer virus, but just anyway. <laughs>